Hey, what's up, guys? So, what is the deal, right? What is the deal with the Holy Spirit? Right, what is the deal with Holy Spirit? What is the deal? Huh? Do we have to ask him to come for him to come? Do we have to pray for a certain amount of time for him to be with us and, and stay with us for a certain period until enough time goes by and then we have to, you know, pray again or, or ask him to come again so that he could come again or whatever? Like, like, like what, what's up with that? What do, what do you guys think about that? I know there's a lot of lingo, a lot of Christianese, a lot of terms that we use in the church nowadays. You know, um, the Lord was here today. The Lord was in the house. Oh, the presence of God is here. I fell asleep in the presence of God. I was reading the Bible in the presence of God, right? Come, Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, come. Holy Spirit, you are welcome. Welcome, Holy Spirit. The Lord moved today. What do you guys think? What do you guys think about these terms? Are they biblical? Are they not biblical? If they are biblical, are they New Testament biblical for New Testament, New Covenant, under grace, in Christ, under the blood, born again, believers such as you and I? Because it's 2020, the Lord has already come. It's 2020, the Lord has already come. So I'm pretty sure we're in the New Covenant. Right? <laughs> if you're watching this video, right? If you've believed in Christ and have been born again through that faith, right? By grace. And now your your duty is not to your duty is not to be born again because you've already been born again, but your duty is to continue in the faith, to overcome, so that your name, right, will be found in the Lamb's book of life when he comes, when he returns, right? The first coming of Christ was the Lamb of Mercy. The second coming of Christ is gonna be the Lamb of Wrath. Wow, that's crazy, but it's biblical, it's true, all right? So let's talk, let's talk, you know, aside from that, I got, I got a little sidetrack, but aside from that, what's up, guys? Let's talk, talk to me. Does the Lord come? Does the Lord show up? Does the Lord, uh, how's this work? Because I'm pretty sure the Bible says that we are the temple, right, of the Holy Spirit, right? And we're the temple of the Holy Spirit. Um, why? For no other reason other than the fact that the Holy Spirit lives in us, fills us. That's why we're the temple of the Holy Spirit, the temple of God, right? We read the Bible, we understand that the temple of God was the place where God would dwell, where God would be, right? The temple of God was the place where his presence would be in the holiest place or the holy of holies, right? But the Bible says that through the flesh or the body of Christ and through his blood, we have access now that his flesh was the veil that was torn. So we have actually become those people who have access to the holy of holies, right? And it says that his spirit is in us. And it says that by the Holy Spirit and that through Christ's flesh, through Christ's body, we have access to God. It says, come boldly before the throne of grace that you may receive grace and mercy from the Lord. Right. It says that we have communion of the Holy Spirit, that by the spirit we can have communion. We can have access to God. So that veil was torn or his flesh was torn and was the access for us to now personally, intimately know God. And that's why our body is his temple because he is actually inside of us, inside this body, okay? So what is true, what is not true? What's not true is that you have to ask the Lord to come. What's not true is that the Lord leaves you and the Lord comes back. What's not true is that when somebody gets healed or when you witness to somebody or when you preach, the Lord is here. And when you're eating or sleeping, the Lord is not. That's not true at all. The Lord is always with you. Why? Because he's actually going to be in you. That was even prophesied and taught by Jesus back in his days of ministry. All right. He said the kingdom of God, what, will be in you. He said the Lord or I or the spirit 
same thing, right? Will be with you, but not only with you, in you. And he prophesied that we have a we will have a helper who will never leave us or forsake us, who will guide us into all truth and teach us all things. And then later on in the New Testament, it's, it talks about the Holy Anointing, who is the Spirit of God in us, our teacher, who teaches us all things. <laughs> so it's like when he's not here, so we can when he's not here, we can't learn. When he's not here, we can't bear the fruit of the Spirit. We can't live holy. But then it says, Be holy as your Father is holy. Right? It says, Be the light of the world. But we know that the Lord was the light of the world. And he said that he would give us, or, 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 or that he would send us the Spirit so that we can be the light of the world. So it's like, we can only be the light sometimes. So it's like, we can only be holy sometimes. We can only bear good fruit sometimes. We can only heal the sick sometimes. We only have authority over the enemy sometimes and sickness is sometimes no the lord never never even insinuated any of that so how come we think that sometimes the lord is here sometimes he's not in fact he says that he will never leave us or forsake us in fact he says that when we gather he's there in the midst so how can we say when we gather with other believers in church or Bible study or, you know, home groups, home meetings, conferences, whatever it is, how can we say the Lord is here because there were miracles and then when there's no miracles, we just said, oh, it, it was all right. It was a cool service. Huh? I don't understand. Because if we learn something, if we really are getting taught by the Holy Spirit, that means he's in us teaching us. If there are healings taking place and miracles being worked and prophecies being spoken and, and inspiring us to speak, then we know it's Him working through us. So we know His presence is here. Um, come on. If we believe in Christ, if we wake up believing, if we wake up knowing we're saved <laughs> and nobody can know that Jesus is Lord except by the Spirit, how can we think we wake up or go to sleep without the Holy Spirit? He's always with us because he's always in us. So I just want to remind you guys today, stop asking him to come. Stop welcoming him. Stop addressing him and communicating with him as if he's not already in you. I'm not saying to stop talking to him. I'm saying start talking to him according to truth because only truth sets you and keeps you free. You understand? Everything that's a lie, that's not true, that's contradictory to God is of the enemy, is of Satan. Jesus said that anything that is of a lie is, is coming from the originator and the source of lies. Satan, he is the source of lies. Everything that's a lie is his son, his daughter. He is the father of lies. So when we lie, when we walk according to something that's not true, it's, it's not godly, guys. We're, we're not believing something true. Therefore, we cannot be set free because now we're following the path of deception who is the work of the deceiver, the enemy. That's what happened to Eve. That's why we have this whole fall of man because she listened to a lie. So stay in truth. Even when you pray, even when you speak to the Lord, even when you speak about the Lord, about his presence, stay in truth because only truth sets you and keeps you free. Amen? Tell the Lord... God, Father, I thank you that you're always with me. I thank you for your holy presence. I thank you that you never leave me or forsake me. Thank you, Father. Thank you that wherever I go today, I can bear good fruit because it's not my fruit, but the fruit of your spirit and your spirit is in me. Thank you for your presence, Holy Spirit. Thank you that today I can lay hands on somebody who's sick and see them recover because you are always in me, with me, Holy Ghost. Tell them things that are true and begin to communicate with him and hear his voice so that he can lead you and guide you like he wants to do because that's why he's in you amen so that he can be what jesus was to his apostles to his disciples your guide your rabbi your teacher your master come on let the holy spirit father you and don't forget that he's always in you and with you. So every time you pick up your Bible, every time you're having a conversation with another believer or an unbeliever, every time you're witnessing to somebody who's lost, every time that, that you're worshiping, that you're praying, guess what? You can do it in truth and in the spirit because the spirit is in you. That's the whole point of Jesus' conversation with the lady, the Samaritan lady at the well. <laughs> you don't, you're not only going to worship here. You're not only going to worship there. You're not, you, matter of fact, you you won't even have to go to a temple because the presence of the Lord will be in you. You can worship him in spirit and in truth. Come on. His presence is in you. 
Stop asking the Lord for things that he's already done. He's already in you. You're asking him to come and he's asking you to realize that he's already in you and start acknowledging him. Start being led by him and stop ignoring him. The presence of God is in you. Holy Spirit come. No, you come to your senses and get in truth so that you can walk in freedom and stop being deceived by wrong teachings. I'm not saying these teachings are, you know, so hurtful, but if it's not truth, it can't be so beneficial. It's got to limit, limit you somehow. It's got to be a hindrance to you and, a, and, and, and an obstacle to you somehow if it's not true. That's how I look at it. You know, every time I pray, I ask the Lord to expose every lie to me and expose wrong beliefs and, and ideologies and, and doctrine. And, to, and, and I ask him to reveal his truth, to his real, reveal his word of righteousness to me. I ask him to reveal what his word really says and help me to remember the scriptures so that I can see the connections and the references. And I can grow more in truth with understanding and no contradiction. Because when, you're con when, when you receive teachings that are contradicting to other scriptures, guess what? You will not have assurance. You will not have confidence. You will not have certainty because you will always have second doubts. Second, you'll be second guessing everything you do because you, in the back of your mind, you're like, well, how can I believe this if this scripture says that? How can I believe this if Jesus said that? Come on, we have to allow the Lord to teach us and we have to reject and refuse everything that contradicts the word. And asking the Lord to come, saying that the Lord was here because something happened, is not scriptural. If, if something amazing happens wherever you go, whether it's the store, your job, or church service, it's because somebody actually acknowledged the Lord. Somebody walked in their authority. Somebody allowed the Holy Spirit to manifest through them. It doesn't mean that the Holy Spirit showed up. It means that somebody actually let the Holy Spirit lead them, guide them, inspire them, influence them, and they allow the Holy Spirit to be who he is, to manifest, to show fruit, to show gifts, manifestations, and that's why we have to yield to him. He's here, and if nothing's happening, if you're not growing, if you're not changing, if you're not letting your light shine, if you're not using your authority that Christ gave you, it's not because he's not in you, it's because you're missing something, you're doubting something, or you're not allowing him to do what he wants to do through you. Remember, he's always in you. Wake up knowing that. Go to sleep knowing that. Stop being scared. Stop second-guessing yourself. Stop thinking you have to do this, this, that, and that for him to be in you. No, no, no. He's already in you. And he's in you to transform you, to help you look like Christ, to help you bring glory to God through your life, through your fruit, through your works, through your ministry, through love through wisdom, through power, through righteousness. Amen? The Holy Spirit is in you. Allow Him to move. Allow Him to work. Allow Him to come. No, no, no. Allow Him just to be Himself because that's all He wants because it's actually the Lord. The Holy Spirit is the Lord. It says the Spirit is the Lord. And where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. There is freedom. Amen. If you don't see freedom, it's because you're not allowing him to transform you, to help you, to teach you, and to manifest himself through you. Allow the Lord. Allow the Spirit. Allow the Father to live in you and to father you and to show you his ways. Amen. Bless you guys. Take care. Bye-bye.